just keep singing. So I did. Came to my daughter's house in Sacramento. Started looking at the feed. Of course, there's people up there, first responders and people taking videos. Of course, I'm watching all the videos. I'm looking at, for friends' houses. I'm looking for anything I could see. It would make me understand really what happened. But I already knew what happened. It was, it, it was, it's in my opinion. We got hit by DWS real bad. I'm allowed to it. I think what happened was after we went down is when people were leaving after us. Is when the the power of that fire firestorm was so intense. People couldn't make it down. That's why people were leaving their cars. Walking down. We have a short window in which to get our country secured and our people stabilized. There's so much suffering going on right now. But I feel hopeful because I know our people really well in this country. 22 years. I'm a CEO, advertising, marketing company. So you drive up there, you see the cars, and you said there are people in them? Well, yeah, there's people in just about all of them, I imagine. Yeah. Um, Did you see any, any, any victims inside the cars? Did you see any? any he, he said he saw bodies that were... The, the, the springs and the seats had melted down and the people were just down low. Sitting on the floorboard. Dude. Sitting on the floorboard or just sitting in the passenger seat, you know, just... I saw um, that video, that first video that they took off the air that we were talking about earlier. That, guy, that one guy that you know. That, the one guy that, that the girl survived with her makeup on. When he took his camera and first panned inside the cars, you didn't see nothing. No, there was not, doesn't even look like nothing was there. Your eyes are looking for something. But there's nothing there but a few fragments of bone some and flesh. If there's any flesh, it's all the way down. Like, just, no, like man, I said, melted. Vaporized. Vaporized, melted, whatever. It's, it's hard to see the body inside of the car until you actually looking see, for something. You notice it, then, you, then you know what you're looking for then because you spot it and it looks like it's not a body in there. But you know it is because you finally it's spot massive. it. And, just and then you look at all the other cars and you start noticing, holy shit, all the cars have a body in it. Weapons of mass destruction, man. Mass murder is what just happened. Murder. This is just, oh, yeah. This is absolute. And do you know people that are still missing? Got down the road and everybody was jumping out of their cars because the wall of fire was coming their way. And he was like, what are you doing? Get back in your car. You're not going to outrun this thing. Get back in your car. And he told several people that were running by to get in the car. And then we carved the way through front yards and backyards and all kinds of shit, just plowing through yeah, yards. It's, 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 and all the people I'm friends with and know are like dukes of hazard. Yeah. I mean, they they know how to drive. They can drive a car, and they they ain't nothing they to be about them. But <laughs> <laughs> well, why originally did they get out of their cars? I mean, because the cops, the cops are telling them to get out. Yeah, tell them to get out and stop traffic because they're idiots and they don't realize they can go around their cars. Well, these, these guys were saying that one lane was completely stopped and only one lane was open for access. And you don't need a street to drive. Yeah, right. you can drive over to parking meters and you just can't hit a tree. You know what I'm but saying? But how, 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 how were the cops, because this is one of the stories, is that there was no help. No one came to help them. How did the cops tell these people to get out of their cars? They didn't. Prove, well, they just took all Paradise's guns. How did they take them? With the fire. The fire. They were lucky to get out with their lives, let alone their guns. Well, yeah, you know how many cars that were up there that were, um, that they had bodies in that were packed full of guns too? Oh yeah. They were? Lots of them? Yeah, yeah. Well, they, 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 as, far as, I, as far as I can understand, they haven't even gotten a percentage of them. That's how many bodies there are. That's, what, that's, that's the main people. thing I, I wish you'd get out there and get expressed across your website, is fucking, they're lying through their Ass. And it's possibly how 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 many population of, of paradise would you say? I, okay, put it this way: I'm growing old with three bells. When I was up there, I do know one of the cops that was up there. One of them, the rest of them I never seen, but one of them was up there that I knew. 
and he lived up in paradise also. I don't know what he was doing up there. He's the only one that I noticed, but, um, cause I've been doing this for fucking 22 years, 23 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, he said, man, it's so much. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. He said, man, it's so There's a bowl in there. Yeah. And there's some water. Can you just pour it in the bowl in his car, in the car? Okay. Thank you. And that cop said, man, it's so much fucking worse than they said. It this, is so much. Wait, say it again, I'm sorry. Is over what they say it is right now, the first hour they were in. 1,200 was the first count. Now they're down to <laughs> under 200, according to the doctor that was just here. So they found, they had to have found the two, first the 200 first people hour. that, that moment, the minute they rolled in there. They had to have had 200 people on their list right off the instantly. Instantly. Edgewood. How many died on Edgewood? I know. Uh, well, the, the trailer parks. The that's that's another thing. Um, my friend wants to come talk to you. He's very interested in, in getting what he saw, and he escaped the plan fairly. And, um, they didn't of, expect anybody to get out of there. They didn't want anybody to get out of there. I don't know. It's okay. just by chance, because of family members living in such close communities. Uh, right. you know, the town's up there a few miles away, but but we, we, we still notice things. We still look up, like the campus. We notice things. And when they saw that fire, they called the people they knew up that way because it looked a lot closer than it was. And by chance, they got out of there with their lives. That's it. And and, and the rest of the people perished. The rest of the people all died. And, and, and the rest of the people perished. The rest of the people all died. About the, the one up in Paradise, the campfire. And you know what was funny is that all the videos and all the pictures I've seen... That's what that same thing was, okay. And everything I saw... The mailboxes and the freaking garbage cans were all still along the side of the road. Untouched. Untouched. But. Untouched. Untouched. But, but another, you know but what? But the foundations of these houses are obliterated. Like, yeah, I mean, the they like are it, gone. Yeah, no foundations a, left. Like, you just held a blowtorch right on each house. And, and just exploded just it. Exploded and just burned it to the On Skyway, melted it. the businesses along Skyway, you know, as I was leaving Paradise to head down, there's... Chunks of concrete besides beach balls and stuff out in the middle of the road. Yeah. The chunks of concrete? Yeah, yeah. from the buildings. It's like a. What do you think they the over. Over. Corner. In the corner. Us. So, so, so say what you just said again, if you don't mind. Okay, um, air, all throughout town, there's multiple car pilots. And, um, and you're a tow truck driver? You, you, yeah. You, and so you've been, you've been seeing these cars because you're going up there yeah, to paradise? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, there's a. There's so many personnel out there, so many emergency personnel. I mean, everywhere nothing you look, like, there's nothing, everything up there is everything but local cops. There's no local cops up there. Local really? Paradise Police? I don't think so. I haven't seen any. Well, they probably gave them a, relocated them and gave them immunity. It's their own backyard, you know, and no one wants to deal with that. Federal Trump state, state Trump's local. Yeah. You know, that's the way it works. You people came into Santa Rosa and took over over the operations. Red Cross and FEMA came over and took over Santa Rosa. You know about FEMA right there, right? No. Yeah, they're right here at the airport. Yeah. The OES. Well, actually, it's OES. OES. It's OES. You have the Office of... Uh, no, governors... Uh, We're here to serve you. Governors. It's called the... Gov I just saw a car. Pa I passed the car. Governor's Office of Emergency, emergency Services. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's what it is. And who are they? I've never heard of them. Yeah, I've never seen All of a sudden, they, they got, got a big operation. Well, our tax money goes to all kinds of places, don't it? That's for free. Budget, for, not for free, but I mean, uh, we got all kinds of government agencies. We had no idea we had. That's what I love it. That's what I heard. Firefighters were wanting to know what the white powdery substance was on the treetops. Interesting. Chemtrails, maybe? Phosphorus. Maybe, yep. maybe, maybe white phosphorus or magnesium. White. There you go. So, so magnesium ignites, and with a big lighter, you can right. ignite so magnesium. And you can show in my book on geoengineering, and I write about the desiccants of aluminum that they've been spraying for decades over us with the geoengineering chemtrails. Those get uprooted in the tree, and that's why the trees catch fire inside. Yeah. So the desiccants, the aluminum, it's not hard to make thermite out of that. And then the, the plants that were taking up the, 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 the aluminum become terpenes, and the terpenes ignite into high, high flammables. And so they're able to ignite using GPS, using lasers, to, to target anything they want. That's why those cars, did you see a bunch of burned out cars everywhere? Dude, that's all there is up there. Yeah, just like fucking... Okay, there needs to be... Bro, it's like this. I went in... Hey, Doug, I'm going. Go sit over there. Hmm? Get, will you go sit over there? I'm, I'm like, holy fuck, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. What, what, to tell me what, 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 what was your first... When you first went, or what call... What, what, when did you first experience it? What was your first experience of this? Um, well, it would be um, probably Sunday.
Monday night. We started calling tow trucks in. And the fire already started? Thursday morning. So it took two, three days for them to call Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday for them to call tow trucks up there? Well, you gotta understand, the whole town's gone now. <laughs> There's nothing really. Yeah, there are people either. There are people that are dead. So what, what do we got to rush for? So, so you went up there with your tow truck, and, and what did you see? What I did saw this, this just vast, I mean, there, this used to be heavily forest area. I mean, it's a, it was a forest town. Really. Yeah, it was just woods. Yeah, the woods. There were pine trees everywhere. They called it the tall pines, um, parts of it. But you go there, and there's just, I mean, here's another thing about paradise. There used to be this much pine cones on the ground, pine needles and pine trees. Right. Everywhere you look. I haven't seen one pine needle up there. It's dirt, red dirt and ash. Wow. And yeah. concrete. It, this thing burned so hot, the asphalt bubbled up on the road. So the road really caught on fire. Yeah, they had to put the roads out. What kind of shit's that? <laughs> so, so what temperature did you melt that? Well, I'm having to go on my laptop and go on to Facebook and go on to Beat County Scanners. Finally, somebody posted, get out of paradise in capital letters. And that's when I really knew, like, like I had minutes. But it, it, so so it let's let's be really while. clear about this. There was no official news media or official emergency services. This is the story that's really big for people to understand. All of you that think that you're going to get notified, same thing happened here, you're not. The only people that notified you were friends and, and people, concerned people, one-on-one -on -one people. Same Rude. thing happened here, word-to-word, mouth-to-mouth, right? Facebook, that Facebook group faked me. That's, that, I, I don't, I'm not really sure that that gal understands, like, you know, the information community that she has going on there, like how helpful it was and how, and how it really, you know, you, you can't, you can't trust, unfortunately, you can't trust your emergency services when things are happening as fast as they happen during the a campfire. It was it was happening too fast. I did not hear one siren <laughs> the whole time. And from what I've been able to piece together from other other Paradise residents' evacuation that day, things were a lot different on Skyway. Within 30 minutes of me leaving, the people that came down behind me had a completely different experience. Meaning what? Uh, meaning the fire was up the road. And the fire tore through the only way to get out of that town. So behind you, I mean, you were fleeing it out now. For people that don't know this area, it's on it's Butte County. It's on a Butte, maybe, what, 1,200 feet, feet on a bluff overlooking looking west. And then up there, the mountains go up higher behind it. So you're fleeing down away from the eastern fires coming west. And you're heading down west down the hill on Skyway towards um, 99 to escape, and everybody basically had to come down off the hill. Is that correct? Yes. That, that's how everybody leaves. There's two lanes going down the ridge and two lanes coming up. When I was leaving at 9.20, they, as, as I was making my way, I was probably halfway down the ridge, and it looked like they were opening up the, the opposite side of Skyway, which would be the up direction, and we're going to start having four lanes going down the ridge for evacuation. That was just starting at 920, um, you know, and, and from what I've been able to piece together, you know, the, the fire was had been in town since 8 o'clock that morning. So now it's 9.30, you're going down the hill, and still, are you seeing fire trucks coming up the hill? You're seeing any help coming from... Uh, no, I did, not, I did not see a lot of traffic coming up the ridge. Um, I, I did see um, CHP or the sheriff, like I said, setting up the, the upside of the Skyway um, to start letting people down in four lanes, because when I came down at 9.20, just to one side was open for people to evacuate, just those two lanes. And that's, you know, things, it was bumper to bumper from Neal Road, where luckily I lived in Lower Paradise, so I was closer to Neal Road where I lived, but people that lived higher up in elevation up the ridge, like 
stay in the heart of town towards Billy Road, they were in bumper to bumper traffic for three or four or five miles, you know, trying to evacuate. Was that two, two lane or one lane? Because we, we see these two lane roads with, you know, one lane, one lane going up, one lane going down, and cars were on the right side, but the, the, going, the lane coming up was totally unused, and people were tourists in their cars sitting on the right side I'm of the road. Thinking that, uh, I, know, I know some of the photographs that you're talking about, and those two-lane roads are, are what you would find kind of more in the neighborhoods of Paradise, like on Row, on row Road, where, where I evacuated. It had um, the two-lane road like that, and Neal Road also. Cars burned out after I evacuated. Cars had burned out on Neal Road, and Neal Road was more like that. But the Skyway had two lanes on either side. So you see there's two lanes going down the ridge, and two lanes coming up to Paris. And like I said, it took, it took CHP an hour to open the alternate side of Skyway to let people go down in four lanes, as opposed to two. Well, here, here's my question that I can't figure out. If, if everybody's sitting, okay, we're all taught to be obedient, you know, and be good little drivers and stuff, but if you're going down the hill and you're stuck in a fire coming behind you and there's a lane, even though it's the wrong way, I don't care. I'm going to drive in the wrong way lane and get the heck out of there. I mean, it's almost like people were told to stay in this lane, we're going to let you out or something, and I'm conjecturing here, but why did everybody just stay in the line and get burned out when they saw it was happening? They got out of their cars and run, you know that, but why didn't they just drive in the other lane, and why did they drive on the other side of the skyway and say, I don't care if I run into a car, I'm going to get out of here. Um, I've noticed that too, and, you know, I wrestled with that myself, um, and I don't want to say that they're stupid or that, you know, they, they lack any type of survival skills because that's, I, I can't make that judgment. All I'm going to say is that that fire happened so fast, the only logical answer I could give you to that question is that they thought that they had time to play by the rules. You know, right. just like just I like you thought you had just like you thought you had time, right? You were you were looking and saying, okay, exactly. I exactly. Right. Just like I thought I had time to play by the rules, maybe you know, maybe start grabbing things like my grandmother's homemade will. You know, um, and I don't know, something something kicked in after I felt the kind of the earth move under my feet, so to speak. Something kicked in, and I got the hell out of there. And you know, nothing, nothing else mattered, and and that was it. And for for two weeks, you know, I was just happy to be alive right. after the fire. It, it just the consequences, the consequences. White suburban some kind of trucks that are one PG&E truck that was pulling out of a nearby neighborhood. <laughs> Wait, so, 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 so,
Let's go, guys. We're parked on the highway until like five o'clock at night. You couldn't go anywhere. Correct. So why did they? Why was why was Penn Road blocked? Why weren't they using it to exit? And when we got down past Line Saddle, where Durham Pence and Penn Road meet, which will then take you if you take Durham Pence, it connects to Clark. Right. They met that block. And the only reason they let us through is because our daughter's car was almost out of gas and we couldn't go down 70 to Orville to get out. We had to take the Durham Pinch Road and go to the corner at Clark and Durham Pinch where that gas station was and get gas for her. So they let you through. So they, so they let you through the block. So they escorted us through. Yeah, they escorted us, actually. Until we got to the traffic jam, they said, okay, well, wait here in line. Just keep turning your car off and, you know. Excuse me, excuse me, ladies. I need to ask this question, Sharon. Excuse me. Excuse me. But CBS News, The Guardian, The New York Times, they're saying 52,000 people evacuated. I don't believe it. I don't think so. They well, how could they evacuate if they were blocked from getting out? If Pence Road, which is the upper bench of Paradise, you can't get out there and it's blocked, how, how, how are they going to get out? There wasn't many cars down before we stopped the arm and on your Pence. There wasn't many down there either. There, there wasn't many cars at all down there. And what's interesting too is that gas station, um, I ended up, he... They, uh, he had yeah. no power. No power. He had no power. There were two PCE trucks parked out front of this gas station, uh, and they were doing stuff, working on the car pumps, but they had turned his power off. And then, you know, we didn't leave power to paradise, but they had his power off. So he kept off gas. So uh, he was very kind and let me leave my car there. Um, and we just left it, and I wrote them out. Um, but we had a boy telling me that the sheriff that drove by, he was from uh, Maryville or Yuba County or something like that. Like that yeah. And we're like, man, how did you get here so fast? And, I mean, they had police everywhere down the hill, um, directing traffic, and well, let, pretty let, much. Let's, let's do the math. If the fire starts at 6 30, 7 30 in the morning, let's say, and now it's 11 o'clock, you're saying you're leaving? Is that right? Yeah. All right, it's three hours happen. to get from Yuba City that they're going to be able to alert to call to bring sheriffs in there? Are you kidding me? No. I, I, I've never seen it so well set up. I mean, they had uh, sheriffs flagging everybody, go this way, go that way, at every light. They literally directed us. We couldn't go anywhere near to go. We had to go. They directed all the traffic from our end of the area. From Clark to Orville, they shut the highway. They shut Highway 99 down and wouldn't let us get on to go to Chico. We had to go out to Orville and go all the way around through um, to Durham and those little towns to get to Chico because they shut off the on ramp tonight. They turned it into a two lane road. People had started going into both lanes and it was still. Uh, snail pace. Um, I mean, traffic was all the way, way behind me. Uh, that was a miracle I even got to turn out from my house to get onto the road. By the time I hit Skyway, um, like, the flames had been traveling behind me um, to, and, like, keeping pace with me uh, up, up until a short distance before that. And, and then the winds changed, and so it kind of veered off to the side and stopped following me. Um, and then I was allowed to move forward in, in front of this, uh, there was a red barn kind of in front of this mobile home park. And then uh, the traffic just stopped for like, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes uh, about that. And uh, I started hearing that people in that mobile park were still around their homes and their cars and traffic was so jammed that they couldn't pull away from their homes because the traffic went all the way back to their home and they couldn't come down the driveway to, to get out onto the road and get away from their, their houses which were on fire. Um, fortunately I stopped 
when it became my turn to move forward, I ended up actually holding back so that I could allow them out and on onto the road. Um, and once they were pulled, pulled, pulled forward, um, the flames started slowly catching up to our cars and the, uh, there was a Pepsi truck back there back behind us that started like unloading all the stuff uh, with the plan of possibly having people load up in there and uh and then have the, having like airdrops drop on us as well which ever to keep us alive basically and uh but unfortunately the, the people that made went on sky went on sky to get out that that excursion failed uh, they ended up having to abandon their vehicles and then being ushered back by the firemen and um at that point, they basically told us we were surrounded by fire. We are not going anywhere in our cars. We are not escaping. We just have to sit sit put. And so they locked off the um, they, they locked off the, the parking lot that's being put in uh, with the Optimo and the the cafe they were building. It wasn't yet complete, um, and they blocked that off. And everyone just got out of their cars, left their cars on the road, and then went to that parking lot um, as a last effort place to just make our stand and hopefully we wouldn't burn it. Um, so why everybody was evacuating out of the And so how, how, did, how did you get out? Because I heard the people that day who stayed there when they were stuck in Paradise, they couldn't get out to like, those that got out were at 5, 6 o'clock at night. I was trying to pass them while they were burning in their cars. And, and were they all stuck in a line? It seemed like everybody was just waiting. I don't know why we're running. Because the cars got too hot, I don't know. I don't know, stuff was just catching on fire out of nowhere. It's hard to explain. And every time I talk about it, every time I talk about it, Facebook shuts me down. Really? Well, I'm listening if you want to tell it, or if not, you know, I, I understand, but a lot of people would love to understand. We're getting a much better handle on how they did it now, which we're going to be releasing shortly. But So, did you, you get it out at, at, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon when you were able to drive down Skyway, or how did you, how did you get out of there? Billy, Billy Road to, um, to uh, Skyway? 
right? No, I could, no, I north north Skyway, but it was solid black block uh, traffic. So at, at ten at ten a.m. I mean, we, we I, backed up, right? Ten a.m. Oh, I'll be waiting for that. I was I was I left my house at like maybe eight thirty or nine thirty ish. I have to look at my phone to. Were you part of the evacuation drills that occurred uh, in 2017 when they... Down the Skyway. I went down the wrong side of the Skyway. Well, we're, to we're told that the people were being held up as late as 11 o'clock um, in the morning of, of leaving Skyway. They had one lane. They wouldn't let anybody. This guy was out of gas. Yeah. So they... they, they yeah, they tried them. to... They tried to stop me and tried to turn me around. Uh... Uh... I, I believe the cops let me... Told me that, you know, go ahead and go by because you see my firefighter plates on my truck. For some reason, that's just, you know, that's the only thing I could think of because he was standing in front of my truck making me stop and stop all the chopping behind me. And they were trying to, you know, gonna say to get out and run or go turn around or something, you know, and I was like, I, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I know what's going to happen. I can't go, you know, turn around, go back, do anything or stop. I got to keep going down that. I knew which way I had to go. What, what, what kind of cop was it, you know? Uh, I believe, I don't know, I have a lot of this on video on my phone, dude, um, as, uh, you know, I was pretty calm for the most part, you know, as it was going on, I mean, it, it really messed me up, kind of, you know, in the head, just because I'm a firefighter and I run to that stuff, you know, and I try to help people, and then, you know, I'm seeing people, you know, that are, you know, need help, and, like, you know, I couldn't do that, so. So why, why so do people do really that? If they were, if they're, what I'm hearing, getting out of Skyway, and then also going down over over to Clark to get out to 70, there was a one lane road that was completely wide open with no fire trucks coming up whatsoever. It was totally clear for people to be heading the wrong way and get out of there. That's what I started. I started that. I started. I got. That's what I'm saying. When that cop tried to stop me, whatever people were uh, kept going and stayed behind me instead of stopping and turning around or getting out and running. Uh, they followed me down the wrong side of Skyway, and I got that on video as well. There's probably like two cars right there riding alongside me, and you know that are, what, you know, besides ones that are behind me. But so I'm trying to get my in my head. I start, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just trying to get in my head because I've heard uh, first-person accounts of them being stuck in in paradise, saying from from 10:30 in the morning until five o'clock at night. They were ushered into the Walmart or Kmart, I don't know which one, but they couldn't get out. Or even the, uh, yeah, my neighbor was uh, uh, sent to uh, the Walgreens because they didn't, they didn't, uh, she didn't make it out, um, you know, on enough time to get all the way out. So they, they um, took safety in the, the Walgreens right there on uh, Skyway and Billy. And so by 10 o'clock, the roads were blocked, 10, 10, let's say 10. 10 -ish. and you're heading down Skyway, they're keeping people from leaving? Why are they keeping people from leaving? That I'm not sure. Well, there was fire on both sides of the road. And it was, it, it, I mean, they, I, I think, I, I, I believe that they didn't, you know, they didn't know what they were doing. They're not, you know, they're, they don't know, you know, fire behavior and, um, you know, what fire, you know, they don't have any experience in there in, in that you know, field for the most part, I, you know, so there's, they're seeing a fire on both sides of the road, it looks pretty gnarly, you know, and they're trying to, you know, get people to go the other way, I don't know, I mean, that's the only reason I could think of why they were doing that, I don't know who would, why they would do that. With the single lane